Brandon Furches, LS4 King, bringing you another tech video today, and we're gonna discuss valve spring installation. Now, I'm not gonna get into the specifics of why you should choose a specific valve spring or their construction material or design, whether we're talking beehive or a dual spring. I'm gonna save that information for a different video um, because it just could really occupy a lot of time. There's a lot of things to consider when choosing a valve spring. But for the sake of this installation uh, video that I'm putting together, we're just gonna assume you've already consulted somebody knowledgeable, you've already purchased a product that's matched to your camshaft, and now you need to get it installed into your cylinder heads. So I'm gonna present two different uh, installation methods, if you will. One is gonna be if you already have the cylinder head off and on the bench, and the other method we'll discuss, how would you handle the situation if the engine was still in the vehicle or the cylinder heads were mounted onto the engine block and you did not want to disassemble for whatever reason. So starting with removal, you've already got the cylinder head off, it's on the bench, you need to get the spring swapped out. Uh, you can see here, I've already removed one assembly and you will need a couple tools to get these springs off. So um, we'll start with what an assembly looks like when you take it apart. So from the factory, you have your valve seal and spring seat, you have a beehive spring, you have a retainer, and you have two locks. And this is essentially what makes up your valve spring assembly in an OEM production LS cylinder head. So to get this assembly off, you have a couple different methods. One method is Take a socket that's a little bit um, bigger than the retainer, you know, than the lip of the retainer. It's got a raised edge here. I'm sure it's a little bit hard to see in the video. Um, just put that on top and give it a good whack with a hammer. And the object is to free the locks from the retainer. You know, so that was quick enough. And as you can see here, we have valve spring, retainer, two locks, and then we have the seal and spring seat, which just pull right off. Nice and easy. So that is a quick, easy, real caveman-like method for getting the valve springs out of a production cylinder head. Um, Obviously, they make specialty tools that accomplish the same thing. Uh, this is just a screw type valve spring compressor. So you would get your arms underneath the spring assembly. You would turn the insert down until it contacts your retainer. And then you would just keep compressing the spring by turning this knob until the retainer is down below where the locks are located. So you can pull the locks out. So give that a couple turns. Grab a magnet. And they're stubborn, you know, these, these locks are very small. But there you go. Got the two locks off, pull the retainer and the spring, and then, you know, to remove it from the spring compressor, you just wanna back off that handle until there's no more tension, the spring's not compressed, and you can get it out of your tool. Now, let's say you're not doing dual springs Let's say that you're just installing a set of like pack beehives or even like LS9 springs. Maybe you're putting a real mild cam in this motor. Uh, installation would be the reverse procedure. Um, if you got new valve seals with the integrated seat from GM, the OEM style, you know, you would install your new valve seals, drop your spring on, put the retainer and your two locks. And since the cylinder head is off the engine, um, and it's on the workbench, installation's relatively easy. Um, you can actually flip the cylinder head to get to the back side where the valves are located, and you can just put a finger on them, hold the valve against its seat, 
as you reinstall, put the spring compressor in, put the locks, the, the valve has nowhere to go. You can physically hold it in place. So that would cover, you know, the installation of beehive springs. It would be very easy. Now, a dual spring, like this kit from Brian Tooley Racing, this is their Platinum Series dual spring steel retainer kit, is a little bit different. It's a little bit more involved to do the installation. Obviously, your removal procedure is still going to be the same for getting your OEM springs out. But, you know, I have one assembly here, and you'll notice it's a little bit different. So instead of your valve seal being integrated into the spring seat, it's two different pieces. So I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to install these as well uh, using a tool from Comp Cams. So we're just going to go ahead and spin this around. We're going to go ahead and drop oh, two seats. These are your spring seats. Just go right into those machine pockets. Now we're going to need to install our valve seals before we put the springs in. So to install the seals, you're gonna slide them over the stem of the valve onto your valve guide. And they sell special installation tools um, specifically for these seals. But in this case, I mean, a 12 millimeter quarter inch drive socket fits over it perfect. And you just tap them on and you'll feel them bottom out. Super, super easy to install valve seals. You can hear that tone change as they bottom out, and you know, you can feel it in the handle of your driving device. So now we've got an intake and exhaust seat, valve spring seat and valve seal installed. So now we're gonna take our two spring assemblies and you just wanna make sure on your dual spring kit that your inner spring just slides in, you know, spins freely. I'll go ahead and drop those two on. And much like the OEM valve springs, you have two retainers, two steel retainers. Just drop those on. And now that's where this tool from Comp Cams comes in handy. Um, this tool from Comp will allow you to do standard cathedral port or rectangle LS3 port cylinder heads. Um, nice diverse tools, super simple construction. You will need your rocker arm stand. So you just drop your rocker arm stand back into place in the cylinder head. The tool drops on where your rocker arms would normally mount. And then you have your plate that drops down on top. So it goes together like that. You just need two bolts. If you buy the tool, it comes with them. I've been using this thing for years, so mine's a a little bit beat up. I've got my own hardware I use, but if you were to purchase this tool from Comp, it would come with new hardware. So we're gonna go ahead and snug this down. And then, you know, the idea behind this is pretty simple. You want to center your valve springs over the valve so your retainer has a nice um, clear path that goes straight down. You're gonna tighten up this bolt, this pedestal bolt. And as you can see, it compresses two springs at the same time. So since we have the cylinder head off, again, it's relatively easy. We can get on the backside, push the valves up, make sure that they're seated in their pocket and you've got your locks. Now you do not want to reuse your stock locks. They're at a different angle. They're matched for an OEM retainer. They will not work with a dual spring kit. You need to use the locks that are supplied. These things are super small. They're under a lot of tension. As you're installing these springs, it can be very easy to lose them. So, you know, you wanna be careful and try to hold on to them. So there's a lip on the valve that the lock will slide into and they're tapered. So what I like to do is I put the lock in where we have the um, most amount of room, which is typically away from where the tool is installed. I'll get it on the register and I'll spin it into place. You know, you can see how I did that one. I'm sure it's a little bit difficult to see in the video just because I'm 
Uh, you know, I'm so far away from this, and I understand it's not magnified, but I think you guys are kind of following along what I'm trying to accomplish here. And we're going to do the same thing on the other valve spring. Now, one thing you'll find with this tool is sometimes the spring will get a little bit cocked. Um, it's not the springs cocked, it's just this plate that compresses it because, you know, it's obviously a very um, simple design. There's not a lot to this tool. So sometimes I'll just come in between the, uh, the tool and the cylinder head and kind of pry it back a little bit so I can really get that uh, retainer where I want. And in this case, the valve came down a little bit. Now it's spinning into the place where I want it. And again, you know, this definitely does take a little bit of patience. It's a little time consuming, um, but it's not super difficult. See, now what I did there was I just drove the um, installation tool in a little bit further. Okay, so now I've got one lock on each side of the retainer. I need to put two more locks in, which will be very simple now from the top, because that is where we have the most room. There's one. Flip this head up, make sure that valve is seated. There we are. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna back off this bolt in the tool. And as the retainers come in, they sandwich the two locks together. And that's it. As you can see, we have one cylinder done. Two valve springs are installed. So super easy. You will need a specialty tool to install a dual spring. You're not gonna wanna use one of these generic valve spring compressors. It's just not gonna get the job done. It's a giant pain. Um, you know, for the small investment to get the comp tool and be able to do two valves at a time, this thing's worth its weight in gold. I definitely recommend you pick one up. If you have any interest in working on LS motors, definitely scoop one of those. So, you know, I'm not gonna do the whole cylinder head. I'm just trying to give you a quick rundown of what it takes to get these valve springs installed. As you can see, it's a relatively simple procedure. Now, what if you're not doing a DOD delete? What if there's no reason for you to take the cylinder heads off the car and you need to change the springs in the vehicle? You know, the issue you would run into is if you were to remove these valve springs, um, depending on where the piston is in the cylinder, you know, you could drop a valve. You could drop a valve down into the cylinder head, which obviously would be a problem. So you need a way to keep that spring, or uh, the valve rather, seated against the cylinder head so you can successfully remove these springs and install new ones. Now, LS4 guys don't really have um, that problem. There's not often a scenario where they would need to do springs in the car, especially with the engine being mounted transverse. That can be a super frustrating thing to deal with the back bank of um, valve springs. But also, if you're doing valve springs on an LS4, chances are you're doing it because you're doing a DOD delete at the same time, which requires the removal of the lifters, which requires the cylinder head to come off. But again, let's just say for whatever reason, you do need to service the valve springs in the car. Everything I showed you on the bench, same procedure. The only difference is you're going to need to air up the cylinders. There's two ways you can do that. You can either use a hose from like a compression tester where it's just gonna thread right into your spark plug hole. You're gonna hook up shop air. So you'll have 120, 130 PSI against the face of the valves holding them up into the cylinder head so that you can remove these springs without dropping the valve. Um, or another method I like to do is, uh, you know, same concept, you're still using like a compression testing hose, um, but I like to use what's called a leak down tester. So instead of hooking shop air directly to that line, you would put the hose in your leak down tester 
Installation's the same concept. But now what you're gonna do is you are going to hook up compressed air to one side of this leak down tester. And it's just a way to um, analyze the health of your engine um, at the same time that you're changing the springs. So, you know, I understand not everybody has a cylinder leak down tester. Maybe you can borrow one from a friend, um, but it's a great way to hook it up to the engine while it's either in the car or even on the stand and assess if valves are sealing against the cylinder head surface, if, um, you know, your piston rings are still in good shape, you're not getting a lot of blow by into the crankcase. Um, you just want to monitor as you go from cylinder to cylinder and make sure that the numbers, um, the percentage of leak is consistent. If you have one hole that has um, a drastic variance from the others, then you might want to consider pulling the cylinder heads, um, you know, and finding out where your problem lies versus just slamming it all back together and hoping for the best. So, you know, again, it, it's a tool that is very valuable. Um, I think everyone should have one in their toolbox, but it's also a tool that not everybody has in their toolbox. And I understand a lot of us are enthusiasts. You're doing this at home in the backyard. You know, this might be the one time you're installing springs. You might never do it again. So this might just be out of the question. But as long as you have a way to put air to the cylinder and keep those valves up, you'll be fine. So again, we're not gonna get into discussion of valve spring selection. I just wanted to give everybody a quick rundown of what it takes to get a set installed, whether you are doing dual springs or even a beehive. You know, we've highlighted some of the tools you need to get this job done. I hope you found the video informative. If there's other topics you'd like to see discussed, please drop it down in the comments and we'll just keep chipping away. I wanna put as much content out there as I possibly can to make your installation of these products that you're buying from me and my, uh, you know, um, my partners in the industry um, so that your experience goes as seamless as possible. So thank you again. I appreciate you checking out my videos.